On the 11th, yesterday, approximately 4.18 p.m., we received a call through dispatch. There's a possible deceased person, 21-year-old female, inside a residence located behind 206 Oak Hollow. Upon arrival, our detectives observed a uh, deceased Hispanic female to uh, with the, a... Cut it off. Start over. Start over. I don't really want. How do y'all want me to say this? On, on uh, I'm just going to leave it as deceased female, and then y'all ask the questions later, okay? And we'll just do that. I'm sorry. She was found in the back of the second home. I'm not even sure if it's a half address. It's just a residence located behind in a, a small building. Uh, this did happen at 418 is the initial call that came in. Uh, upon arrival, they did find a deceased person inside the house. Further investigation uh, led to uh, the family being detained and, and relocated out to our office for interviews and the suspect placed into custody for uh, what we're assuming is gonna be a murder charge in the end. It was a portion of a body dismembered and uh, a residence that was covered in, a, in blood. And it's a gruesome scene at best. The suspect was there and the suspect was detained on scene, uh, kept on scene until we brought everybody back here for their interviews. He waited and his family is the one who called it in. Uh, the father of the suspect made the initial call to dispatch and he was uh, detained at that stage when we first pulled in. I'm sorry? He did not give us a rest gesti statement at all at that point. Uh, he waited on his own. He no, the way it sounds, they immediately called when they found the victim and uh, proceeded from there. Uh, at this point, evidence shows it was a kitchen knife. Yes. Everything happened on the property and all parts and pieces were recovered and submitted for evidence. There has been prior calls disturbance wise, but nothing to this effect and, and to, to this level of violence. Uh, there is a little history on him, uh, but at this stage we're going to We'll keep that to ourselves. No, sir, no juvenile history. And this was taking place in a residence occupied by himself, the suspect, and the wife, the deceased, uh, living behind the parents' house. The parents' house. No, sir. It's a uh, residential home, uh, wooded lot, somewhat wooded lot on a rural area residential location. And uh, not out of the ordinary to have a secondary living space on it. We really don't want to divulge any of that information. This is still an active investigation. Uh, it seems to be that there's 
the witnesses are, are coming forward, everything's taken care of, but we really don't want to put too much of that out. Uh, at this stage, we're going to stay away from that question. That is not part of our uh, questioning at this stage. Uh, it doesn't appear to be. It appear, appears to be newlyweds, and uh, th that's where we stand with it. The victim is not. She's at this stage of the game undocumented and uh, just happened to work somewhere near the location. I don't really want to say that because I'm not sure and I don't want to put false information out. To the best of our knowledge, yes. I believe the only notification that we have had is an aunt who lives in the county. They were inside their own house, their own residence, and uh, were addressed by the suspect. And when they saw something wasn't feeling right for them, they approached the house that they were living in, and that's when they found what they found. I'm going to say uh, a very small amount of time. At this stage, we do have a confession, but it is still under further investigation. He didn't say anything to us on scene. We brought him back for his witness statement, and that's when he confessed to it. He left his residence, walked into the parents' residence, which induced them questioning where she was and they went out back and found her. As, as a human going to the scene and uncovering the evidence, how do you think that that is so? The best you can say is that's the world we live in today, and uh, it is, it's a gruesome scene. And both sides of these families are, are going to be altered by it. Either way, suspect and or the, the victims. It's a small residence, it's kind of all combined, so. It is gruesome, it, it's, a, it's a gruesome crime and, and uh, hopefully everything turns out to be, uh, end up the best way it can at this point. At this point, like I said, further investigation, we did, we did recover evidence to, to be tested to see where that all leads. Until that information comes out, we'll stick to this as an open investigation. No priors at this time that I've seen that we've been able to pull up. Uh, so this would be his first entry into our system. Uh, just at the at the family and a, and a possible sibling, so totally not related. The suspect's 21. It appears, to the best of our investigation, that somewhere around 11 o'clock that afternoon, which led into the phone call and then further investigation and receiving recovery producing warrants to even make entry into the house. So the victim is 21. He's 21 also. It is. And and the neighborhood is a very low key neighborhood and it, it's a shock for all of them. At this point, we're going to stick to still under investigation on the motive. Uh, as far as we could tell, she was counter help at a local business. 
I I don't want to say any any company names. You know, uh, as far as the way things happen in this county and the pro and the progress the county makes as an agency, we are seeing a lot of more population moving out here. Uh, things like this are going to move this direction. So we can hope for the best and hopefully all people involved and all parties involved and uh, all of the agency personnel take this and then be able to, to sleep well at night with it.